Hello friends and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm so very glad that you clicked on this video today to join me in bringing you some amazing bookish content. So as you can see by the title, I am bringing you two book tags. I was recently tagged by two different booktube YouTubers. I'll make sure to link both of their channels and the videos that they did for these book tags down below. But the first one is Tangible Reads and she has tagged me in the evolution of a reader book tag, which was originally done by Spread Book Joy, and I'll make sure to link that YouTube video down below as well. And then secondly, I've been tagged by a library fairy who has tagged me in the telephone book tag. That was originally created by Reading Riley, and I'll make sure to link all of that down below for you guys. So without further ado, let's jump into this amazing book tag. And basically, if you remember the game as a kid where you say something in someone's ear, it goes around a whole group of people, and you hope by the end, the thing that you've talked about is exactly the same. So for the telephone book tag, basically, over the books that she has selected, I'm supposed to go from the last book and kind of continue on with making sure that I find another book in correlation to that book that connects with its color, the front cover of the book, font of the book. The Library Fairy, she left off on the night book. This is a book on my TBR list that I want to read so bad. I haven't gotten an opportunity to read it yet, but the book that I thought resembled that, which is called 13 Witches by Jody Lynn Anderson. And the reason why, as you can tell, the night books has a very central light that's in the middle of the book. And it looks like you're kind of drawn into that specific point, whereas the rest of the book cover is black. And that's kind of what this is giving me. You're drawn into the middle to this main character holding a book. Basically, this is following a 12 year old girl named Rosie whose mother is missing. The gold that's on that book kind of just brought me into this one with the gold on this book. This is called Zabor or the Psalms by Kamel Daoud. And this is a book I recently picked up at Barnes and Noble. It's a book about books. And basically it follows a young man who was ostracized and shunned by his family, but the love of writing and reading really saved him. It kept him just protected and he would write characters and illustrate things that really brought him joy. Towards the end of his father's life, he was deeply sick and all the family kind of wanted to see, you know, is there something that he could do to help his father's death be less painful or at least prolong his life. Through the wonderful characters, the reading and writing of our main character, he was able to present that to his father and read to him during those times of his sickness to help ease the pain. Based on the fact that the book kind of has a scroll-esque kind of texture to it, and it kind of looks like scroll, it made me think of Treasure Island, which is the great illustration classics by Robert Louis Stevenson. And the reason why I thought of this is because when you think of pirates, when you think of those ships back in the day, like what did they have? They had scrolls rolled up for their maps. This follows a man, Jim Hawkins and his friends, they set to sail for Treasure Island, hoping to find buried loot from Captain Flint, the fiercest pirate of them all. I thought of Black Beauty, which is another great illustration classics. And what made me think of this is again, the red lettering on the front. And Black Beauty basically is a very heartwarming story that I remember reading as a kid that follows this beautiful beautiful black horse through growing up as a young foal into a lot of tragedy actually as an adult horse it shows you how animals have feelings they mean a lot you know although they maybe can't speak and they can't tell us how they feel they have feelings and we should be extra extra kind to them it made me think of as old as time a twisted tale by Liz Broswell because the black on here is the beast from the beauty and the beast is the beauty and the beast retelling and it kind of just gave you the same vibes you see like the beast you could say he's animal like he was an animal and he was not treated the best he was a little bit misunderstood he went through a lot and people shunned him and treated him very badly for that but he had a voice inside as well it's a twisted tale basically saying what if Belle's mother was the one who cursed the beast and from that I thought of the land of stories the wishing spell by Chris Colfer and I am currently reading this book right now I love it and the reason why I thought of this book yes the covers look very different the fall and whatnot but on as old as time there is a rose and if you look very 
closely here. You can also see a rose as well on that. So that is what I connected the two. But also, as old as time is a Beauty of the Beast retelling, so it's a fairy tale. And this is the land of stories that follows a bunch of wonderful fairy tales, especially that of Snow White. So that is why I picked this book up next. And it follows two kids, Connor and Alex. They're twins who are gifted this amazing book by their grandmother that holds so many stories. And then they're taken on a wild adventure. And that made me think of Story Thieves by James Riley. And obviously with the lovely gold foiling, that is what gave me, you know, the connection between these two books. But then also the Story Thieves, this is also about a book. It also says the word story, that said the word stories. And I believe this follows a young kid named Owen who encounters his classmate Bethany climbing out of books in the library. So I thought that also has a really nice connection to the land of stories and that if you've read it. So yeah, that is gonna be the end of this first portion of the book tag. Those are the different books that I thought of that kind of went in correlation to the last book that a library fairy did, which was Night Books, which I cannot wait to get in my collection in my hands. So next we're gonna dive into the next part of this book tag. I was tagged by Tangible Reads who did the book tag by Spread Book Joy. And I'll make sure to link that information down below as well. And there's a list of questions that I need to answer. So question number one says, how has your taste in books evolved? Well, I think that's really interesting for me because actually I really got into reading in January of 2022, so this year. Um, reading was never something I enjoyed. Actually, reading was something that I skimmed, something I like went to the last chapter of the book, like in high school. I remember a lot of spark noting. I remember a lot of reading the last chapter. I remember reading the back of the books, finding something quick online to get the paper done. Reading was never a joy for me. So I can say it's, involved, it's evolved tremendously. I love reading. I enjoy reading. I have a huge collection of books behind me. I have several books I've already finished, so many books inside of shelves, books on Amazon, TBR list. But I think once you get of a certain age, things that in your childhood you used to not like, you realize how important they are and how amazing they are. And so I think that's kind of why. It's just kind of one of those things. The next question is, how has the format of your reading changed? My reading has usually just been your average paperback book, but as of recently, I have been purchasing a couple hardcovers. And then I also love Audible. Audible is amazing. Right now I'm currently listening to Percy Jackson, The Lightning Thief, book number one. The narrator is amazing. I love it. And I do hope to read, um, to listen to a couple more audiobooks next month, maybe doing two at the same time, like book two of Percy Jackson. And then I'm thinking book number one of Harry Potter to read it in tandem along with reading the book for next month. So yeah, I think that's how it's kind of changed. The next question says, do you read more or less than previously? Yes, I read way more than I did before, obviously because this year it was a goal of mine, a resolution of mine to get into reading. And then it says, when do you read? So I read a lot when I have my break time at work. I read a lot when I get home. I read in the morning, I read on the weekends. I listen to audiobooks when I'm driving, when I'm going on walks. So I read literally whenever I can. The one thing I can say is I have refrained from reading at night. That used to be a really big thing for me is staying up super late, reading books, but I noticed it affected me throughout the day. So I can say that's the one thing that has changed in terms of how much I read and when I read and has how often you read changed. So yes, that is how often I read whenever I can, but it's changed in the sense that I don't read at night as much. How has booktube changed you as a reader? It's changed me tremendously. It's almost like held me accountable because I, you can make a TBR list or you can make a, you know, monthly hope to be read, you know, set of books that you want to read. But when you post and make an Instagram post on book Instagram, or when you make a post on YouTube, or you're posting a video on a book that you're reading, do they not finish it? It's always just a little bit like, oh no, you know what I mean? Maybe there's a, a someone who's expecting that to be finished for a review. So I think booktube has really helped me in being accountable when I'm reading. And also it's made the love of reading blossom for me even more because you see other people who are just as enthusiastic about books as you are, as well as it's given me so many recommendations for new books. I mean, I 
can't even just describe to you the amount of people that I have gotten books from. I mean, just a whole wide range, a couple of nonfiction books. Like I am not a nonfiction reading person, but I definitely say booktube has changed me for the better and has really helped me love reading even more. It gives you a sense of community, a place to be where it's like, wow, all these people love books. Yes, we may view them differently, but I know that in the end, we all love books. So I'm gonna be tagging to do both of these book tags. First, you need to do the evolution of a reader. And secondly, you need to do the telephone book tag, both of which are gonna be linked down below for you from the creator's YouTube channels. First, a book olive, which I would like to tag to do these videos. Next, we have booked and busy. Next, we're gonna have bookishly nerdy. Then we're gonna have we book lovers and Rachel Bronson. So those are going to be the people that I wanna to tag to do this very book tag. And I cannot wait to see what you guys say in your videos. But yes, I'm so very glad that you guys clicked on this video today. Please do not forget to give it a thumbs up. Hit your notification bell so you can be notified every single time I post a video. And subscribe to the YouTube channel. I would love if you would join this bookish fam because we are so friendly, so nice, and we have so much fun together. So without further ado, I'll catch you in my next one. Bye, friends.